Hello and welcome to Math for Today. This is Chapter 2, Numerical Expressions, Lesson 3, Writing Numerical Expressions. If you haven't already, please complete the Math for Today. I'll insert a link here in the video. In today's lesson, we will begin with a dig-in, a warm-up, and setting up our notebooks. We'll then go into guided practice where I'll show you how to do it and then we'll do it together. It'll be your turn. You'll complete either a problem of the day and a benchmark problem. And then we'll go into our closing where you'll learn what homework is, your exit ticket, and or reflection. So let's get ready with the dig in and the warm up lesson. So we have been working with numerical expressions that use symbols for the operations. In this lesson, we will write the numerical expressions from the verbal expressions, how we read the expressions out loud. To do this, it helped for us to recognize words that can be used for each symbol. Let's start by setting up our notebooks. Your learning target for today is I can write numerical expressions. By the end of this lesson, your notes may look something like mine. I have my two column notes. I have some key words on the right hand side to help me identify the different operations. Um, and then I have examples of how to do that um, underneath there. And then on the left hand side, I have some practice problems so I can try it on my own and then review it before I have a test. So let's turn to page 65 in your Big Ideas textbook. I want you to turn and talk to your partner and discuss this problem. Write a real life problem that can be represented by one of the expressions below. You will then switch papers with your partner. Which expression represents your partner's problem? And then explain. Pause the video if you're working by yourself and press play when you're ready to continue. Okay, so let's come back. Let's look at the first expression. So the first expression is seven times eight okay, plus five. Okay, so I could say that I have eight students okay, five um, joined me or recess, okay? Um, they all played for seven minutes, all right? So that would be a real life problem, okay? So I have eight students, eight students joined me. So joined would be a key word. I would know that I needed to add and then they all played for seven minutes. So I know that I would have to multiply that. All right, let's look here. If I have seven times eight plus five, so I could say, um, let's see, there were seven shirts that cost $8 each. Okay. The socks I bought cost five dollars, right? And then I would need to know my total, right? And I could say, what is my total? What is the total cost, right? So that would be some real life scenarios because if I have seven shirts, they each cost eight dollars, I would have to multiply seven times eight. And then I also bought some socks that cost $5. So I would need to add the five to my cost of my shirts. Okay. So if you're working with your partner, how can the parentheses change the meaning of an expression? Try and explain. Well, the parentheses can change the order of operations. Very good. 
So now let's go through some guided practice and take some notes. Let's review what we learned yesterday in lesson two. Fifth graders at a school write a paper about a historical person for a contest. There are five classes of 25 students and one class of 28 students participating in this contest. Now they gave us the expression. Today we're going to write our own. Use this expression five times 25 plus 28 to find how many students participated in the contest. Okay, so yesterday we practiced with PEMDAS, right? Okay, and that tells us the order of operations in which to solve an expression. So if I have five times 25 plus 28, do I have any parentheses? I do not. Are there exponents? I do not have any exponents. Is there any multiplication? Yes. Okay. So 25, I want to set that up in standard algorithm, times 5. 5 times 5, well, that's 25. 5 times 2, well, that's 10. 10 plus 2 is 12. So that would be 125. Next, I need to bring down, I need to add. Okay, I don't have multiplication. There's no division here. Oh, sorry, I did have multiplication. There's no division, and we're going to add next. So 125 plus 28. 8 plus 5, well, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Carry the 1. 2 plus 2 is 4. 4 plus 1 is 5. And I'm going to bring down the 1, and I get 153. So it says how many students participate in the contest? Well, 153 students. Very good. Okay, in today's lesson, I want you to write the words as an expression. Divide 10 by the difference of 9 and 4. Well, if we reviewed our words, what does difference mean? When I tell you to find the difference of two numbers, what are you going to have to do? Well, you're going to have to subtract, right? So that's telling me I'm going to have to subtract 9 and 4 first. And then it says divide 10 by the difference. So I'm going to have 10 here. So we have 10. So what goes here? 9 minus 4. So the numerical expression is 10 divided by 9 minus 4. Remember to include your parentheses. Why? Because the parentheses will tell you how to solve it, right? In the correct order. It tells you where to start. Let's look at this example. Write the words as an expression, then interpret the expression. They want you to then solve it. It says add 54 and 97, then multiply by 2. So they're telling us exactly what to do. So 54 plus 97, then multiply by 2. That's it. So your numerical expression is 54 plus 97 in parentheses multiplied by 2. Because it tells us exactly what to do. You see this? Then, right, that's telling us in sequence how to do something. So we do this first and we do this next. The value of the expression is 2 times the sum 54 plus 97, okay? Because we would get the sum here and then we would basically double it or multiply it by 2. Okay, I want you to write the words as an expression. Multiply 8 and 5 then divide by 4. Okay, so let's do exactly what it tells us to do. Okay, so it says multiply 8 and 5. So it's telling us to do this first because then it says to do that. So 8 times 5, I do that first, so I put parentheses around it. Then I'm going to divide by 4. Okay, number two, 
multiply the sum of 14 and 18 by 4. So it's saying multiply the sum. What does it mean to have the sum of something? Sum? That means to add. So it says multiply the sum of 14 and 18. So 14 plus 18, okay, multiply by 4. I need to get the sum first and then I'm going to multiply it by 4. Okay, number three says write the words as an expression, then interpret the expression. Number three, multiply three by the sum of 12 and three. So if I see sum, what are you going to do? 12 plus three. Okay, multiply by three. Okay, so you could either have the three in the front or the back, it doesn't matter, but it's telling me to add 12 plus three first, and then I'm going to multiply its sum by three. So subtract 30 from what? 50. Okay. So 50 minus 30, then divide by 10. So a lot of this goes into that following directions piece. We have to kind of do exactly what it's telling us to do here. So let's see, okay. Multiply eight and five and then four. Okay, multiply the sum of 14 plus 18, right? And then you're going to multiply that by 4. To recap, we have number 3. We multiplied 3 by the sum of 12 and 3. Okay, so 3 times 12 plus 3 says the value of the expression is 3 times the sum 12 plus 3. Okay, number 4, subtract 30 from 50, then divide by 10. Okay, so we're doing exactly what it says here, 50 minus 30 divided by 10. The value of the expression is the difference, 50 minus 30 divided by 10. Now it's your turn. Write the words as an expression and then interpret the expression. Subtract 15 from 60, then divide by 9. Okay, so let's write the expression. So it's telling us subtract 15 from 60. Okay, so this is what we need to do first. Okay. So 60 minus 15, because it says subtract 15 from 60. Okay, so I'm going to do that first. Then divide by nine. It's telling me exactly what to do. Okay. The value of the expression is the difference 60 minus 15 divided by nine. Write the words as an expression, then evaluate the expression. All right, so let's read it together. Multiply 5 by the difference of 25, so it says multiply 5 by the difference of 25 and 20. So I could have 5 multiplied by 25 minus 20. How did I get minus or a subtraction here? Because it says difference. That difference means to find the difference of something. I'm going to subtract. Okay. So 5 times 25 minus 20. Okay. And it gives you 25. Okay. Because 25 minus 20 is 5. 5 times 5 is 25. Newton has 
He spends $4 on lunch and $13 at the store. Write an expression to represent the situation. Okay, so you don't necessarily have to solve it, but they want you to write an expression. So he has $20. He spends four on lunch. When you're spending money, are you adding money to your pocket or taking money away? You're taking money away, so that means to subtract okay, on his lunch. And he also spent $13 at the store. So if he spent it at the store again, right, he's, he's still subtracting that money. Write an expression to represent the situation. Well, I know he had $20 to start with. He spent the money, so I'm going to put a subtraction sign. And because he spent four on lunch and $13 at the store, I think I would need to add that cost together first. And then I could just subtract the amount that he spent from his $20, right? Let's see. Yes. Absolutely. Okay, here's a benchmark question. Which expression represents the sum of nine and three? I see sum of multiplied by four. So when I see sum, I know this is add and multiplication. Okay, so let's see. Um, before I look over here, I'm going to write my own expression and see which one matches. So it says, uh, which expression represents the sum of, so I know I'm going to need to add 9 and 3. I need to do that first. Okay, either multiplied by 4 here, or I could have a multiplied by 4 here on the side. So let's look at number, or letter A. Well, this is a subtraction sign, so that is not correct. Okay. Let's look here. I have 9 minus 3 and 4, but this says sum of 9 and 3, so that can't be right. Let's look here at C. Well, this says 9 plus, there's a plus sign, but it says 3 times 4. And that's not what it says to do. It says to add the 9 and 3 and then multiply by 4, so that is not right. So my answer is... B, 9 plus 3 times 4. All right, your homework tonight is Chapter 2, Lesson 3 in your Big Ideas Math textbook. You also have assignments in Khan Academy. If you still have questions at this point, please come and discuss it with me. Or if you're watching this video, please discuss it with your teacher. Your exit ticket today, you'll find this in Mastery Connect. And you made it to the end of the lesson. Have a great day.